All right, we're back looking at Touch OSC, and we're gonna look at a few different tips and tricks with some of the buttons, faders, things like that, uh, to help out your workflow. So if you watched the previous video, you know I'm using a PC with an old iPad here. Fancy. And this is going into my DAW Reaper. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see what we can do. Okay, so here we are in our Touch OSC editor. We've already connected it as the server. So our iPad also has a black screen on it. Let's go ahead and add a button a button here we go a little red button you should see this on your screen just wanted to make sure that this worked this was just a little simple test here and again if you need to do a test for your computer go ahead and you know pick a channel throw a CC in and let's see how it works on your DAW okay so assuming you've got a button working here let's go ahead and try a different one let's get rid of this and we're gonna add in a fader. All right, so the first thing I wanna take a look at is the direction. So here on orientation, you know, a lot of the time we see faders that are going up, down, so north to south or south to north. Let's go ahead and go east. Make this a little bit bigger. And of course, we should see this on our iPad as well. But what we're gonna make is basically a scroll bar for our DAW. And let's change up our color here to blue. Awesome, so this blue scroll bar, let's make this active. So we're gonna use channel one. We'll just keep it there, change this to constant. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in 68. No real reason, I'm just picking that for now. Now, again, on our iPad, we should be able to see this. Uh, of course, it's not doing anything in our DAW right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at our DAW. Okay, so here's our DAW. Of course, I'm recording my audio up here, but what we wanna look at is down here. We're gonna try and make this bar move us from left to right. So let's go ahead into our action list and let's take a look at scrub. Now this may be something different in your DAW. This is just something that I know that works in Reaper. And what we made this as we look back in our editor here, we're working with channel one, CC68. So back in Reaper here, we're gonna select transport, scrub slash jog, find control, and CC relative. Let's go ahead and add. And then when you touch the iPad, it should automatically add that in. So now let's take a look. Let's see what's going on here. Let's zoom in. Yeah, and we're moving left to right. Now it's a little hot. You can change some of that with your parameters, but it's awesome if you zoom out here and you can see the nice thing about this scroll bar is here you have the end on one side and the beginning on another. And it is relative, so it's, it's you're gonna be able to find your way through. Super nice. All right, so now let's add in something to control expression and vibrato. So a lot of the times with the kind of Spitfire or Cine samples or any VSTs, uh, especially with the strings, you want to control what's going on with the instrument. So let's go ahead and add an XY. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And like I said, we're going to control two different parameters at the same time. That way we don't have to have two faders that we're moving up and down at the same time. So let's go ahead and add a label here. And on this side, we're gonna do, let's do expression. So down here, let's call this expression. And then let's add another label. Let's make this one green. And let's do vibrato for this one. And again, down here under values, text, default, we'll add vibrato. Alrighty. So now on our XY, let's take a look. So on the X axis, we'll send a MIDI signal. And then on the Y axis, 
we'll send a MIDI signal. So let's find another clean channel for me. So we'll do channel one. Again, this is gonna go to constant. And let's go 68 again. And we want the scale to continue to be between zero and 127. So then down here, let's add another. Let's go ahead, constant, and let's keep it at one. And then we'll do 69. Again, this isn't special. This is just MIDI channels that I know are open for me in Reaper. So hopefully now on your iPad, you can also see that we have uh, our expression and our vibrato, and we're able to move this around. Actually, let's, just to make it even clearer, let's change this one more time to another color. All right, so let's go into Reaper now, and let's add an instrument. Fold this one up, and let's add a violin. We'll start, and we'll do it with, let's do it with Cine Samples. Or sorry, uh, Spitfire Audio. All right. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is arm this track. Cause right now, if we move anything, we do anything with our iPad, uh, nothing's really happening. Okay, so let's arm the track. And then we're going to select, right now it's on input one, as you can see. Let's change this over to all MIDI channels. And here on our Spitfire, let's click expression, right click this, learn, and then let's go back into this and we are gonna put this on the Y axis right here. So let's turn off the send from the X axis so that we don't confuse it. Let's go back. And now again, we're gonna move the expression, boom, and it's locked in now. All right, so we moved it on our iPad, we had selected Learn MIDI, and now it's there. So let's do the same thing. Let's go back and turn off send from the Y channel, because we don't want it to be confused. Turn it on from the X channel. And then here in Reaper, let's do our vibrato, right click, learn, and then on our iPad, we're gonna touch the vibrato on the X axis, and there we go. And again, it's only moving the vibrato, it's not moving our expression. But if we wanted it to, let's go back and turn it all on. So we're gonna add our send from Y, and then in Reaper, it should just work beautifully. Look at that. So now when you're playing a note, you don't have to move two different faders at the same time. You can just move one, which I personally find a lot nicer, a lot easier, a lot more, um, honestly, a lot more expressive. Now let's try it with another instrument. Let's get rid of this one. Let's do uh, Cine Samples. Um, let's do a Strings. And I'm taking this from the top. I have patches already fixed up, but we're gonna do this from the beginning. So this is just a regular legato. And again, let's just find where things are. So we want dynamics. Uh, let's do dynamics and speed on this one. So back in our editor, let's turn off our Y axis. And of course these aren't exactly gonna meet what our labels are, but this is just a test anyways. So for dynamics, let's do learn and move our X axis. All right, back, let's turn on the Y axis, turn off the X and let's do speed. All right, and that is moving swell. Turn them both on back in Reaper, and there we go. We can move both of them. And as you see here on the iPad, it's just an up for one to the side for the other. Super simple, obviously a little confusing to set it up, but so nice to work with in your DAW. Now, if you close this out, you are going to lose these, so make sure that you save it as a new instrument. Okay, so let's add here and let's do a radio. Now for what we're about to do, uh, this is fine. We're just doing five of these, that's cool. Let's go ahead and add a label here. And this is gonna be for, let's do half on this one. And cop 
paste that. I'm gonna turn this into quarter. Copy paste that. And let's turn this one into eighth. And that's enough just to show kind of what it is that we're trying to do. But what we're gonna do is each time we select this, it's gonna change the size of the grid in Reaper. So in this encoder, this is what we want. This is the number of steps. If you wanted more, you could add more, um, but this is what we're doing for now. Now this is a little wonky. If you know of a better method, definitely reach out to me, but this is the only way I was able to make this work. All right, so let's go over to our control and we're gonna put this on channel 15 because I know it's open. And we're gonna go to a value and the value we're gonna work between right now is one and two, because again, I know it's clean. And then we're gonna go with property. And what I've figured out is that the number of spots here is the number of properties. So we're gonna go five. All right, so again, this is 15, one, and then we have five slots here. So that should be pressure one, two, three, four, five. And of course we see this on our iPad here. And you can toggle these on and off. So let's leave it on uh, one of these empty ones and I'll show you why. So let's go into Reaper. All right, and let's pull up our action list and let's search for one half. All right, set to one half. You can see I already have a shortcut in here, so let's remove that. We're gonna add a new one, and let's just go ahead and touch the half toggle. And now that is 15-1. Let's search for a quarter. And like I said, I already have one. Let's change it up. And now hit the second spot, that quarter. And you can see that's 15-2. And take a guess what's going to happen when we do 8. 1 8th, hit the toggle for that. CC3. Awesome. So now, let's zoom in here. If we were to hit that toggle half, all right, we're looking at a half note here. If we go quarter note, changes it there. Eighth note, changes it there. I think this is super useful when you're working in the MIDI editor. Um, but it's also nice when you're working with a big score and you want to see this stuff. So again, take a look at what I have up here. We're going to the half note, boom, quarter note, eighth note. Now the reason we started with it on the fourth or fifth toggle is because you can't hit them twice. So I'm on eighth. If I hit eighth again, nothing happens. You know, you have to switch it over for anything to happen. So that's why when you're programming this, um, if you start on the first, if it's starting here, you want to program the others first and then go back to that one. Otherwise it won't respond. I think this will make working with your DAW or any other engraving software much easier. So enjoy that. Be sure to reach out in the comments below. Let me know if you found any other good tips and tricks to use Touch OSC. There's a great community on Facebook as well of people who make uh, different templates and share those. So check that out and be sure to like and subscribe this video to check out the next one. Thanks for watching.